Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this session. This talk is going to be about technology, education, and how the world can be changed by combining both of them. Before I start, I would like to share a couple of things about me. I've been working in technology for the last 10 years, a bit over, I think. And uh, I started my technology journey, uh, probably as most of you did, I went to a technical university, graduate, gra graduated in computer science, and then I got a job at a technology company, company in Romania, uh, my home country. My passion, however, is uh, only through experiencing it with my nonprofit organization that I founded uh, five years ago. When I did that, I had no experience with the education system and what formal education is like. And um, I remember that when starting it, it was about 2013. And I was home on a medical leave for a month. And I always wanted to get involved and do something that has an impact in the world. But before that, I always thought that in order to be able to have a big impact and to create a change, I need to be a doctor so that I would be able to go to people who are poor or who live in developing countries and help them and give them the gift of life. But in 2013, that perception changed. While I was actually randomly browsing the web, I stumbled upon volunteering opportunities in Africa and develop, uh, developing countries in Southeast Asia. And those opportunities were for people working in technology, just like me, to go there and help either technical universities or local companies build their software infrastructure. So I applied and I got rejected. <laughs> and with that, I tried searching for other organizations that did the same thing. And I found others and I applied and I, and I either got rejected or I didn't get any reply. So then I thought that this was something actually that I can do in my own home country in Romania because I wasn't really satisfied with the situation that Romania was in back then. So as a former communist country, Rom Romanians, uh, Romania's political situation is always a matter of corruption. And back then I realized that if people would be more educated, we would have a greater chance as a country and as people of our country to actually grow economically and develop our country. But because we had those constraints, we weren't able to. And year after year, the wrong people got elected and the wrong politicians got elected. And this was because in Romania, most of the people used to vote and are also voting now, incentivized by whoever makes them the most promising uh, promises of giving them a better future, but they don't do it. And people are basically not educated to think of themselves and uh, see what things are true and what things are not. And this is how I started Dahlia's book, which is a community of people just like you and me who want to have an impact in the world and in our countries by using the skills that we have because we absolutely love technology. As I mentioned, when I started it, I didn't know much about education around the world. I just knew that technology has made a big difference in my life and it has enabled me to live a life that I didn't even dream of when I was little. And I also knew that technology education is very important for kids today and is very important for their future. Because many of the kids today don't even know that they can have a better life, that they can build their own future, the one that they want to, and that technology is actually a bridge that enables that. So I was thinking, how will I tell children that? How can I make them want to live a life 
a lot better than the one that they see amongst their peers or their families. How can I enable them to challenge themselves? How can I empower them? And how can I prepare the generation that is going to build tomorrow's world? And I found out that there's actually no recipe. And with my own nonprofit, like in any other startup, I explored, I tried, I failed. I discovered things along the way. Uh, the more I did, the more I learned. Dots were connected, lines were drawn, and then lines were erased. And then other dots were connected because this is the growth process. And along the way, I discovered a lot of things that happen outside my tech bubble. And I got to see what happens in the world right now. Because we, as people working in technology, are transforming the world through the technology that we're building. We are shaping the world. And we are currently building what once were futuristic concepts like artificial intelligence or robots or virtual reality. The world is, is evolving at an accelerated pace because of us. And you and I are enabling that through what we do. We are disrupting industries and the social landscape. We're even changing the definition of work and what jobs look like. Because of us, old jobs have disappeared and new jobs have appeared. However, for children today, the world looks different. The World Economic Forum releases reports every year about the future of jobs and work. And in the report in the 2018, it was stated that 65% of the children in primary school today will work in jobs that don't exist now. And by 2030, 85% of the jobs that will exist have not been invented yet. That is a huge difference. On the other hand, the education system still prepares students for repetitive jobs and trains skills that are currently being replaced by automation. The education system is one that has been slowest to adopt technology and slowest to change and adapt to the needs that exist currently in the world. And this has been revealed also with the recent pandemic where a lot of inequalities and disparities that we knew existed, existed have been made even wider right now. And these disparities are between the technology sector and the education sector, and between children from different social backgrounds or geographical areas, and even those that have or don't have physical or intellectual challenges. Because while we, we who work in technology have transitioned instantly to going remote and work from home and live our lives not the same as before, but similar, and have, for example, maybe zero interruptions in our growth and in our careers and in our learning. Worldwide, more than 91% of students have been left out of school. That is around 1.5 billion students. They just stopped learning because the education system everywhere is not prepared to handle this kind of disruption right now. And as a result, the most vulnerable and marginalized were the most affected by this. Because children continuing their education online are again the same ones that are privileged and that already have opportunities to develop their skills. The opportunity gap has been widened with this pandemic. So this means that a lot of children today are left out from their future. But they are still the ones who will be shaping it, the ones that need to learn the skills that they need to thrive in the world that we're building for them tomorrow, and the ones that don't get this opportunity in their current schools. The world that we're building for them tomorrow is 
a world where technology takes over a bigger and bigger part of their lives. And they will not only need to understand how technology works, but also how they can create technology in every possible job that exists and will exist. Because even now, if you look at the jobs that are available, you need tech skills to successfully do what you need to do. And not only as an engineer, but also as a marketer working in social media or an accountant or even a salesperson. Changing the education system is a very long and slow process. It is happening. There are a lot of initiatives that involve teachers and students and new curriculums in education. However, this progress is very slow and it requires still generations of transformation in order to reach even the most vulnerable students. And today's children are the ones who will shape tomorrow's world. They're the ones who are going to vote for our leaders and the ones who are going to have an impact in their community. They are the future creators of technology and we don't need to wait for education systems to change to give children the tools that they need in order to thrive in the world of tomorrow. We can do that through technology today. Because what happens right now in the world is that one in three internet users is a child. And if you look, for example, in countries in Africa, on average, two of five youth have access to internet. In Europe, the number is even higher. In Europe, 25, 24 out of 25 youth have access to internet. This means that digital technology can be a game changer for them, especially for the disadvantaged children. And digital technology can enable them to make their voices heard, can offer them new opportunities to learn, opportunities that they don't have currently in school, and can change their lives. Or it can be another line that just divides our society and makes children be left behind. We don't know what the future of jobs will look like for them, but we do know what skills they need to have in order to be successful adults. And those skills are actually more than what is being taught in the education systems right now. They need to learn how to build organizations and how to use and identify resources in their communities that can have an impact. They need to learn how to work as a team, how to communicate, how to collaborate, how to empower others. They need to know how to be leaders. They need to know how to identify fake news and think critically about everything that they see or hear. They need to know how to behave on the internet and how to stay safe online. And most importantly, they need the ability to shape technology rather than be shaped by it. At Dahlia's book, we build a community with people like you and me changing children's lives and teaching them the skills that they need to thrive in the world of tomorrow. And we're doing that by teaching them how to code. In the last five years, we have overall a bit over 300 people volunteering to teach kids how to code. And we have changed the lives of a bit more than 2,500 children. And many such communities exist worldwide. A few years ago, we ran a... Um, survey amongst our volunteer participants. And what we find out, found out actually was that what motivated every one of us is the same thing. And the main, moti the main motivator that we have is that we want to change the education system because we want to have an impact in the life of children. And we know that by doing this, we actually get something in return because this also enables us to learn more skills 
and to learn how to work with people, how to coach people, how to explain. And these skills are also skills that we're using at our daily jobs. And because of this, we can be, we can be even more successful in what we do. Another thing that our volunteers have mentioned it's something that it's been a recurrent theme when asking why are you getting involved? The answer is because I learned what I know by myself while growing up. And I want to offer children today a different opportunity than the ones that I had when I was a child. So what does education mean? Education means freedom. By giving a child education, you give them the freedom to build a future that they want, that they've always been dreaming about. In today's world, quality education cannot be separated from technology because the future is going to be technology for them. And you and me as creators of technology are responsible to make sure that we are taking care of the children today and preparing them for the world that we're building for tomorrow. So who can be a teacher? You and me. We all should be teachers to empower children to thrive in tomorrow's world. Thank you very much.